Greetings, Rob Chastner here, uh, continuing, actually concluding our long study of Isaiah chapter, uh, Isaiah the prophet. Um, this is the final um, lesson in, um, or study in chapter 66. So if you're following along, we're going to start right off with Isaiah chapter 66, verses 1 and 2, which say, uh, this is what the Lord says, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house you will build for me? Where is my resting pl place? Where will my resting place be? Has not my hand made all these things? And so they came into being, declares the Lord. These are the ones I look on with favor. Those who are humble and contrite in spirit and who tremble at my word. Now, what is God impressed with? God is impressed with man building him. Uh, you know, is he is he impressed with God with man building a crystal cathedral? Uh, you know, how many times have you seen a church pleading for money to build a larger building to house God? And how many times have you seen churches fold in attempting to build an impressive house of God? And the irony is that there is not any structure which is large enough to fit God. The eternal universe cannot uh, contain God. Why would we put ourselves into a financial peril to build large structures and large buildings? This is not what impresses God. What is it that impresses God? Those who are humble, those who are contrite in spirit, those who tremble at the word of God. God walks into a massive building uh, where there's a gigantic mortgage um, uh, and, and he's not impressed. But he sees a man on his knees at the altar who is contrite in spirit and who is trembling. You know, trembling, you know, means one who believes the word of God. Now uh, he knows that he has fallen short of God's word. And he knows that one day God is going to judge him. And so this humble servant uh, trembles at that notion of the word of God. That's what God is impressed with. One with a contrite, a contrite uh, heart, one, one who is humble. All right, verse three. But whoever sacrifices a bull is like one who kills a person. Whoever offers a lamb is like one who breaks a dog's neck. Whoever makes a grain offering is like one who presents pig's blood. And whoever burns memorial incense is like one who worships an idol. Those who, those, they have chosen their own ways and they delight in their abominations. And so they are acting religious. They are going through the, 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 the motions, the rituals, but where is their heart? God recognizes the outside is different than, than the heart. And so God says, if you, you have chosen your ways. Uh, what ways have we chosen? And the, the scary part is uh, God honors the way in which we have chosen to live our lives. God is a self-determining being. We are made in God's image, and therefore he honors the way which we have chosen to, to, to live our lives. All right, let's look at verses four, five, and six, which say, So I also will choose harsh treatment for them and will bring on them what they dread. For when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, no one listened. They did evil in my sight and chose what displeases me. Hear the word of the Lord, you who tremble at, this, at his word, you, your, your own people who hate you, and exclude you because of my name, have said, let the Lord be glorified, that we may see your joy. Yet they will be put in put to shame. Hear, like listen, hear that uproar from the city. Hear the, that noise from the temple. It is a sound of the Lord <coughs> repaying his enemies all they deserve. So he is saying uh, that their worship is just adding to the crimes and that I will be bringing judgment upon them. Uh, and notice that there are two groups of people. There is one group of, 
where God has spoken to and they do not want to listen. There's another group where God has spoken and they tremble on God's word. Notice that those who take the word of God seriously may suffer from the other group who do not listen to God. However, notice the comfort for God's people in verse 6, um, that whatever discomfort we encounter for our faithfulness to the word of God, that ultimately it will be well worth our faithfulness. All right, verses 7 through 10 say, Before she goes into labor, she gives birth. Before the pains come upon her, she delivers a son. Who has ever heard of such things? Who has ever seen things like this? Can a country be born in a day or a nation be brought forth in a moment? Yet no sooner is Zion in labor than she gives birth to her children. Do I bring to the moment of birth and not give delivery, says the Lord? Do I close up the womb when I bring to delivery, says, the, says your God? So you can see that anti-Semitism has nothing at all to do with believing what the word of God says. The Jews uh, made many horrible mistakes, yet God has, still has a plan for them, for, uh, for all the Jews. So verses 10 through 13 say, Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her. All you who love her, rejoice greatly with her, all you who mourn over her, for you will nurse and be satisfied at her comforting breasts. You will drink deeply and delight in her overflowing abundance. For this is what the Lord says, I will extend peace to her like a river and the wealth of, the na of nations like a flooding stream. Uh, you will nurse and be carried on her arm and dandled on her knees as a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you, and you will be comforted over Jerusalem. Isn't it interesting that God says, I'm going to be like your mom? Uh, yeah, throughout scripture, we get the images of God as a mom and as a dad, uh, we see the strong masculine side of God, and yet we also see a soft, caring, feminine side of God. Notice that he says, I am going to comfort you as a mom comforts. He is not saying, I'm going to comfort you like a dad, because typically a dad is not in that position. He doesn't take that position. You are okay, wipe it off, you know, wipe the blood off your, your knee and keep moving forward. But mom is wrapping you with, you know, gauze and 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 uh and ace bandages or you know uh you know for something like a mosquito bite and so um the idea here is that god is going to be a great comfort to uh to his people all right verses 14 through 18 when you see this you hear your, your heart will rejoice in your and you will flourish like grass the hand of the Lord will be made known to his servants, but his fury will be shown to his foes. See, the Lord is coming with fire and his chariots are like a whirlwind. He will bring down his angry, his, sorry, his anger with fury and his, and his rebuke with flames of fire. For the fire and with his sword, the Lord will execute judgment on all people and many of those Many will be th those slain by the Lord. Those who consecrate and purify themselves to go into the, gar their, the gardens, following one who is among those who eat the flesh of pigs, rats, and other unclean things, they will meet their end together with the one they follow, declares the Lord. And I, because of what they have planned and done, am about to come and gather them. All right, um, here, um, uh, here he is speaking of, of the abominations that would uh, go about in the high places, eating unclean animals, which is breaking part of their covenant or the kosher, the laws or kosher is a Hebrew word for clean. In the end, things get really uncomplicated. Many church plans, uh, can can become complicated, but when you begin to break down 
the plan of God, it's very simple. You live for God, you are you will be blessed. If you live for yourself, you, there will come a time where you will be judged. So many people think it is difficult <clears throat> to follow God's way, but God is asking you to live by faith, and there will be much greatly uh, greater reality revealed to you. Our temporal life is nothing more than a vapor in history for for God's economy, uh, because God is eternal. And we do not have a full understanding of the eternal perspective. And so God is asking us just merely to live by faith. All right. So, uh, or simply, not merely, but simply live by faith. Verses 19 to 24, which say, I will set a sign among them. I will see, I will, and I will send some of those who survive to the nations, uh, to Tarshish, uh, to the Libyans, to the Lydians, uh, Tubal, Greece, and to the distant islands uh, that have not heard of my fame or seen my glory. Uh, they will proclaim my glory among the nations, and they will bring all your people from all the nations to my holy mountain in Jerusalem as an offering to the Lord on horses in chariots and wagons or on mules and camels says the Lord, they will bring them uh, as the Israelites bring their grain offerings to the temple of the Lord in ceremonial clean vessels. I will so, And I will select some of them also to be priests and Levites, says the Lord, as the new heavens and the new earth uh, that I make will endure before me, declares the Lord, so will your name and descendants endure. From one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, all mankind will come and bow down before me, says the Lord, and they will go out and look on the, the, the dead bodies of those who rebelled against me. The worms that eat them will not die. The fire that burns them will not be quenched, and they will be loathsome to, to all mankind. Right, verse 19 is likely referring to the church and the Great Commission that was given to, on, on the day of Pentecost. Uh, remember, the word of God uh, began to spread about the world. The Jews will uh, were never really mission-minded. They were not really sending out missionaries. Remember, they all stayed in Jerusalem until the great diaspora, uh, or the dispersion of the Israelites into exile, it was the church that spread uh, the gospel. Notice um, the great contrast from previous verses and in verses 22 to 24, restating the different results between those people who don't listen to the word of God and those who take the word of God serious uh, or seriously. And so uh, here he is given a promise, giving a promise to Israel and remember, the word Israel means those who live their lives governed by God. Uh, I am going to create new heavens and a new earth. It is going to go on forever. That's eternal. And in like manner, you, your seed is going to continue forever as well. So the idea that God is finished with Israel or for the folks who believe in replacement theology, such as the church replaced Israel, that's nonsense. Paul goes uh, to great lengths in Romans chapter 9, 10, and 11. Uh, it is only for a season that, uh, that through God's mercy that he'll be reaching out to the Gentiles. But there will come a date, so the Gentile community need not be boastful. Uh, don't put down the Jews because God has an eternal plan uh, for the Jews. The last part of verses 22 to 24 show great devastation will come to the earth. And this, uh, this verse shows that those of us who remain will see field after field of dead bodies that have transgressed against God. And God is saying, I come uh, and there will be great losses. Uh, so can we even imagine what God is thinking here when he sees what is going on, you know, in one day around the world, how many rapes and killings and uh, all, all the nonsense that God has, is witnessing, all of those events will be stored up 
for the fulfillment of these verses, the day when God deals with all sin, all disobedience, all those who rejected God's word. Uh, so uh, our study of Isaiah is closing with some very sobering verses. There is a, con a contrast, two kinds of people in the eyes of God. We have worshipers <clears throat> in verse 23, and then we have people who end up being worms uh, or worm food, if you will, in verse 24. We need to make a sobering reality check and see which of these two destinies is appealing to you and is appealing to me in our lives. Are we living our lives according to worship or are we living our lives according to leading us to become worm food? God is speaking to all mankind. The stars are a testimony to uh, to our creator. Um, um, uh, the, 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 the director of music and a, a psalm of David, the heavens declare the, the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hand. So the word of God is being spoken to everyone in every language just by the design. If you have a design such as stars, moon, earth, mountains, nature, there has to be a designer. And so we have one of two choices, uh, one or two responses um, uh, to God's word. We can either reject it, stating that it's simply stupid uh, and we get away from uh, the word of God, or we can take the word of God seriously and have it cause us to tremble when we humble ourselves and realize of our own, in, in our own inadequacies uh, our own humbleness, well, God will lift us up with his grace and with his mercy. And that's really it. There's two choices, worship or worms, worm food. Uh, this is uh, the message that God is giving us through the prophet Isaiah. All right, I hope this has been helpful and informative. Um, and uh, thank you for viewing and good day.